All right, welcome back, everyone. So where we left off, we have test for our nav bar. We have test for a completed task and or pending task page, as we see here. We went into creating snapshots. We went into using memory router <clears throat> and as well into using our task contacts provider into our router so that we can actually have access to that. So let's uh, test out our home real quick. Our home page will actually be um, rather simple to create. So let's just create that real quick. So let's do homepage.test.jsx. And let's do all of our imports. So we're going to want our describe. We need our it. We need our expect. OK. Next, we're also going to want test render. from React Test Render. And we are going to want our actual home. Oh, no. Uh, and that's actually a home page. Excuse me. From our pages and home page. Okay, what else do we want? We want to grab memory, memory router, and I believe we're going to need the context as well. So let's grab task context. All right, and that should do the trick. So let's start going into our describe block. <clears throat> In our describe block, we're going to describe what it is that we're text testing. So in this case, I am testing the homepage.jsx. And what it will do is it will um, confirm children. Or let's just say I want to make sure that it has a header. Check for header of point. Okay. So now let's go into actually creating this. So we know that we're going to, let's try. So let's try just actually creating the home. So let's go with const home is equal to, oh, hello. Test render create, and let's have our home page go in there. Okay, so now we start seeing our problems. First one is, hey, this isn't right. Um, so warning, React is expecting a string for building components, but a class function for composite components, but got undefined. Okay, so let's check what home looks like. So home page. Got it. <clears throat> so I'm exporting home, not home page. So it's telling me it's undefined because what I'm trying to run a test on doesn't exist. So I'm going to grab home. Okay. And it looks like that was able to compile. So let's make that go to JSON. And let's console log in. My test runs, we see that I have a children, and so let's expect it. Oh, hello. And let's say we want home.children. Dot or children at index zero. And I want to check the type. And I want that to be an H1. So I'm just manipulating through home. So I got home, I go into children, then I go into index zero because children is an array of objects. And inside of index zero, I go into the object of type to grab that H1. Okay, so now let's say that I wanna see the children inside of object one. So let's go children, object zero, and let's go into children. 
Okay, and we see that we have the array of home. So let's do that real quick. Let's expect. And we see home to be home. It's going to tell me, hey, there's a serialized serializes the same string and I could even it tells me if this is supposed to pass because it's supposed to be an array of a string then instead of using to be you should be using strict equal so now I use strict equal and then it passes okay and then let me just clarify what to be and to strict equal actually is so to strict equal is going to actually be kind of like the triple equal sign against the double equal sign, right? Strict equal will actually check the data types that are inside this block. So it checks that there's an array, and then it checks that the first index of that array is a string of home. And that is the reason why it tells me that I need it to be to strict equal, because if I try to use to be, it's not specific enough to where it can actually create a good assertion between the between what's expected and what the strict the what the um value it is that I wanted to return. Does anyone have any questions over home page? Um, something that I want to point out is that home was able to render on its own without using memory router or anything. And that's because it never uses any type of access to um to anything going on inside of our router. So for example, our header or nav bar needed access to memory router because it had all of these links inside of it, right? And our links come from browser router. Our completed tasks needed access to all of the, um, the task contacts. So it needed to be inside of browser router. And the same thing as our pending task. But our homepage quite literally doesn't touch anything. Our homepage is just a div with an H1 and a bunch of miscellaneous tags but it doesn't touch anything going on with browser router. It doesn't know anything about the DOM. This is just pure HTML. So when I write my test, I can actually just check the pure HTML. And then I could even have a snapshot if I really wanted to. So let's say home dot to match snapshot. And now we'll see that the snapshot of home is now created and same thing, we have our H1 tags with our paragraph tags and all of our miscellaneous tags. Awesome. So that one's pretty easy. Let's erase what we don't need here. So we don't need that. Da, da, da. Won't need home. And these imports are really bad, so let me... Clean that up a little bit. Um, so this is all coming from within. This one is not. So just to talk about, oh no, what did I erase? Just to talk about imports real quick. <clears throat> when it comes to imports, you want your explicit. So if they're in curly black brackets, they're ex explicit, not implicit. You want your ex your explicit imports at the top, and you want the ones that are coming from outside libraries first. So this is coming from VTest, so it goes at the top. Come from React Router, it goes at the top. And then it goes into my actual application, right, where I'm calling my task context, but that's coming from my own application. And then it comes from my pending task, which is coming from my own application. Then we have test renderer, which is not explicit, it's implicit. And that's going to go at the bottom or the top bottom. And then my task, which also comes from my application, which goes at the bottom. And that's just the regular form that you want your that you want your imports to come in. Something not really that important, but just in case you guys were curious. All right. So now let's move into this page, right? So we have my read my book page. And currently this button doesn't have any functionality of changing it to true or false and actually showing, reflecting that on the task. So let's create some tests for that. <clears throat> so now if we go into task preview, 
we see that task preview is a row and <clears throat> it just shows this individual. Oh, this is actually the wrong thing. Du, 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 du. Task page. There you go. So here we have task page. It has some parameters where it's grabbing the ID and then it has tasks. All right. And it runs this use effect function where it passes the ID and the tasks into that use effect and then renders that individual task, right? Notice that current task is an empty array. And the reasoning behind it being an empty array is because I could initialize this as null and just have null and then render this. But instead, I wanted to actually be able to see all of this individual things. So let's see. The first thing that I want to test would be this get current task function. So let's check that real quick. Let's create a file. Not in it. And let's go into task page. Oh. And let's import <clears throat> or describe. Let's import expect it. I also would like to import memory router. And I would like to import the task page. And from my task page, I would also like to import get current task. I also need my context, which is going to be my task context. And let's see. So I won't need anything else there. The only other thing that I may need will be the button from Bootstrap, I want to say, but we shall see. Da -da -da. Okay, so now I want to import test render. From React test render. And I believe that's pretty much all we need for now. And let me just check real quick on pending task. Oh, we actually need my task as well. Yeah. So let's grab that. And let's go straight into our actual testing of this. So first I wanna test, I already described that function, right? So get current task. So let's get current tasks. And this is a function. So I'm going to leave it as a function in there. And get current task takes in a parameter along with a task, um, with, a, with an ID. So let's call get current tasks. So my task is equal to, or let's say tasks is equal to get current tasks. I'm going to pass it the ID of two, and I'm going to pass it my tasks. All right, so I have the ID of two and the tasks being passed in there. And let's just console log it. Okay, so we see that it's failing. So let's figure out why it's failing. Oh, that's why it's failing. Silly me. So it ensures get current tasks, returns an array of one object.
Okay, so now we see that a console logged it and we do have our one object. We have the ID of two, we have read my book, et cetera, et cetera. So let's expect one, the object. So let's grab tasks.length. And I want this to be one. Other than that, I want to expect that the ID matches. So I'm going to go into task index zero dot ID. And I'm going to make sure that it's returning two. Okay. So just so that you guys could see a fail, if I put one in there, it's going to tell me, hey, this was supposed to be one and I received two. But the ID that I passed into the function was two. So I know that it's supposed to return two. And here, if I put two in there, I know it's going to fail. Okay, so I turn it back into one and it's able to return that one book. That's great. So now let's go into tasks and I'm not gonna go straight into the rendering stuff. Uh, we'll, let's move past that and let's go into creating a test-driven development function. All right, so what I wanna do is I want this, when I click on this button, I want it to change from true to false, meaning that the state, the completed portion of this task is now false. So let's write a describe block for that. So the first thing is what I want to name this function. So let's call it change status. Okay, and this change status, what should it take in? No ideas? Okay. It needs the button. Say again? It needs the state of the button, so whether it's completed or not. Okay, so it needs to know if it's completed or not. All right, let's create that. So for now, let's just expect something, right? So let's say const. Uh, status, and let's make that equal to hmm, change status. And you're saying that it's going to take in a Boolean, right? Whether it's completed or not, what else would it need? Okay, so in my case, I know that it's going to need, it's just going to need tasks and the individual task, right? And instead of tasks, I'm gonna pass in my tasks here and the individual task. And this is going to fail because it doesn't exist. So in here, I'm just gonna make it exist. So let's say change status. Okay, so now it knows that change status is supposed to be in there, doesn't know what to do with it. And Right now, currently the function that I have is true. So let's say I want to turn it into false. Status is equal to, oh, sorry. So now let's run an expect status. And what I want it to be is I want it to strict equal. And I want it to strict equal this. So I wanted to return that one element. What do I want it to return actually? I think what I wanted to return is a series of my tasks, but where I wanted to return is <clears throat> when it returns my tasks, because I'm gonna be setting it to the use context, right? Let's do... 
So I have my tasks. I'm going to be using set state to set the new thing. Uh, yeah, so what I want is a series of it. So let's just grab JSON here. And let's call this cons expected output. And let's make that equal to a list, command V. But now where two is, I want this to be false. Okay, so that takes care of that. And now in the strict equals, I can say I expect it output. Okay. So that's my test. It doesn't know what it's doing because it's saying that it's supposed to require a task. Ooh, so let's grab a task. And this task, just grab it real quick. It's just going to be here. Okay, so now there's a problem with this function. It's saying that function is not doing anything because it's not a function. So let's go into creating it. <clears throat> so let's export cons change status. And just like we said, it would take in tasks and a task. Ooh. Probably one equal sign there. <clears throat> okay, so now how can I access this? How can I make this work, right? So I have my tasks <clears throat> and I have my ID. And in here, I already have my one task. So maybe it doesn't even take tasks. Maybe it just takes in an ID. All right, so let's change that. <clears throat> Yeah, let's change that to where it takes in an ID. And let's go back into my question here. And for task, let's just have to. And let's comment this out for now. OK, so it expected a bunch of stuff, but didn't get anything. It just got undefined. OK, so now my progress, my <clears throat> my test is working through. We see that it's uh, actually recognizing the function now, but that it's not returning the correct value. So let's actually create this task. So what I want to do is I want to do return tasks dot map, or actually, let's make it let updated task be equal to task.map. And if the task ID is equal to the ID, then I want task.completed to be equal to not task dot completed. Else, let's just say continue. Okay, so that's not working very well. Maybe else I just wanted to return the task, right? And let's just console all this. So now if I scroll up here, I'm actually going to see the updated task. So now we see that two 
is getting completely removed from here. So where is this one coming from? So this one, get current task. We don't need that. <laughs> Okay, so now we see that two is just getting completely removed, right? <clears throat> and that's not what we wanted. We just wanted to update two. So how could I make this work? Any ideas? You said you're trying to show all of them? Yeah, so I'm so. trying, to, right? <clears throat> but now when all of them show, so currently right now, it's only matching with the ID of two. Yep. So what it does is it returns everything besides the ID of two. It's not what we want, right? So let's say I did this, it would only return one task, right? Right, you do two. Um, no, you should, I'm just thinking about um, You're mapping across the task, it's if the task would be equal to what you pass in. One more time? No, I was reading, reading over the code. Oh. Yeah, so this is getting the task, mapping it, masking if it's equal to ID. But why is that returning a bunch of false and trues? Well, you're asking whether it is or not. You're just doing, asking a boolean of does it equal those, that or not? Does it equal to yes or no? And then it's mapping that across the, the thing. So you're getting all false except for the one that is two. Okay. Right? Perfect. Right. So, so maybe you're trying to do filter instead of, are you trying to just pass in, only return the second one if it does? So I want to return the entire array, mm -hmm. but instead of two being true, I want it to be false. That would be uh, false or completed equals. Let's see. Um, false, right? Pass pass to completed equals false. Uh, well, the not task dot completed should have done it for us. So let me just make sure that this runs correctly. Da, da, da. Okay, so it's running into that problem. Let me see false, false, true, true. Okay, so it's just removing two altogether. Okay, awesome. So let's just filter it as we said before as you mentioned before so let's filter it first Okay, let's have that run. Okay. So now I made all of them. You wanna you want it to be dead. There you go. You're missing it. Okay, there you go. Okay, great. So now it grabs them, brings them in where it's two, right? And now what I want to do is I want to say updated task dot completed is equal to not updated task dot completed. And now we should see it turn into false, but it's not turning into false. Oh, we want index zero. Okay, there you go. So now we got it as false. And now we want to throw that back into our regular tasks. So. Yeah, so you can actually just go back to doing the map thing even, what you're doing before and then just passing the zero. 
or, or whatever it is that it was one, right? Let's check. And tasks, and yeah, let's make the task.map. Let's have a task in there. And what this is going to do is it's going to say where task.id is equal to ID. Then I want updated tasks index zero. And otherwise, I want task. So let's see what that does. And instead of console.logging that, let's console.log and tasks. Yeah, console.console.console.log. Thank you. Okay, so now we see it turn back into false. So that's perfect. And that's what we would like to return. And now it passes. So it passed our test. It's returning the correct thing. And now we have that button that's going to take in tasks and an ID. So let's work on this button now. So now this button, in order to take in task and ID, all we need to do is give it an on click. And on this on click, I'm going to pass the change status. And to that change status, I'm going to pass in tasks and ID. And there's something I actually want to do here where I want to set my tasks to the resulting value of this function. But I need to actually import that, right? Because currently I don't have it. So let's do const set tasks. And that's supposed to come in from use context, task context. Okay, so as far as our test goes, we see that it's working, but let's check what it looks like when I run the dev. Everything's working. We see I got my completed task in there. Oh no, something happened here. But I will assess that. Oh, it's because I added a class instead of doing the inline styling. Okay, awesome. So it says read my book, click on the button, nothing happens. It actually returned an error. So let's see, type error cannot read properties of undefined reading dot completed. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. So maybe I didn't name it completed. Nope, definitely named it completed. Mm. I am calling it correctly. Let's see, go read my book, clear this, let's refresh it, okay, click on it, and it's saying, doesn't know what to do there, because it's saying that it's not defined, so let's check. We have task, which is coming from use context, and we have our set task, which is also coming from use context, so let's uh, console.log it, so let's do use effect. Okay, so we see the task is there. And task does have a completed. Here's our completed. And when I click there, it says cannot read properties of undefined, reading completed. 
Interesting. So maybe here. It's console.log test. And let's say that this is coming from in bunk. Loads, click true. Okay, so we see the in function. It has those six and it still has the completed. So there's not a problem there. Uh, let updated task. Okay, so maybe the problem is here. Okay, so we see that it never got to the updated task of console.log. So there's likely a problem here. So let's uh, console.log in here. Okay, so now we see the update and the update comes out as zero. So that's the problem that we are passing in the ID from params, but maybe we could just make it task.id. Okay, now we see it go over to false. And probably don't want that, that, and don't want that. Okay, so now let's take a look at other ones. So let's go to do some laundry. I turn it to false. If I do to task pending, well now task pending is missing one. Oh, sorry, pending tasks, there you go. Yeah. So now I go to pending tasks and past, uh, pending task has that now um, added. Let's say I turn this into true and I go into completed task. Well, now I see that watch the Mario movie is true. Okay, great. So I was able to create a function that would switch them in between. And I was able to actually test that function as well in my task page. So the, here's the setup. I put in what I expected as an expected output. And I put in what I was passing as well so that I can have that expected output result correctly. And that's the gist of working in a test room development environment, right? Where somebody provides the test for you and you make that test work out. You have a return value that's expected. So I expected to have this list of objects where two would be false. And I just needed to make that happen inside of the test environment with code. All right. So the next thing I want to go into, wow, that flew by fast. Um, the next thing I want to go into is how to make actual API calls with testing. So Let's uh, go into our home because our home was actually pretty clean. And let's just make an API call to our favorite API, the Pokey API. All right. And let's just do a describe block here. And let's say get Pokey on. Yeah. So let's say get. 30 Pokemon. And what I expect is to have, now I have to use something called VI to be able to mock Axios. And I don't even think I have Axios installed. So let's install that. So I'm gonna install Axios. I'm gonna run the, not the dev, I wanna run test. Okay, so now I have my test. Oh no, there's something failing here. Let's see. Du, du, du. What failed? What failed? We'll create a snapshot of completed tasks. Uh, we'll have a completed task. Why are you failing? Oh, never mind. That's not what's failing. I apologize. I got confused. 
what's failing is the suite where I'm telling it to get 30 Pokemon. And let me just close all of this so that we don't have any white noise. Okay, so we'll have get 30 Pokemon. And actually, I can make it specific so that it's not listening to any other type of test suite and specify what it is that I want it to run. So I can run npm test JSX. It's running this. We see that console.log showing up. I can get rid of it. Okay, now it's telling me exactly what's failing. Perfect. So now inside of this it block, oh, I'm so sorry. Let's uh, also import Axios. And here we're gonna mock. So we're gonna say vi.mock. And we're going to specify that what I'm mocking is Axios. Okay, so now it request a return of 30 Pokemon objects. And what I'm going to do is this now has to be an asynchronous function. And because it's an asynchronous function, I can now await a couple of things. But before I go into that, <clears throat> what I'm going to say is I'm going to grab axios.get and I'm going to mock the resolved, the resolve value. And in this mock, well, I can go into the Pokemon API and I know that the endpoint for it is Pokemon question mark, limit 30, I can submit this and now it gives me all the Pokemon. And I know that this is what results are supposed to look like. So the value is gonna come back in a dictionary. I know there's going to be a data. And then inside of another dictionary, there's going to be a count. And let's just give it the number of 15, this is mock, so really this, this doesn't matter. Let's say I give it a value of next, and let's just say that that's a string of next. And let's say I give it a value of previous, which will be null. And then finally, a value of results. And results will actually be an array of objects. Okay, great. And results is what I want to actually see. All right, I want results to get returned to me, so that actually, so that I could actually get some data running. So let's uh, let's actually look into this. Let's see what it will look like. So currently, I'm mocking Axios. So when I this function goes through, it's not actually going to send an Axios request. It's saying, "Hey, we're going to pretend that we're sending something." Uh, default get return request. To let's see, B test. Um, let's see, this. yeah, how to mock axios with B test. Let's see, we have axios, axios dot get dot data. Yeah, okay, here you go. Axios that get mock resolved. Aha. There you go. Okay, so it's resolved and not resolved. I apologize, everyone. So I'm telling you to get the resolve value. That's what it's supposed to return. So now that I have that, I can actually get the function. So const Pokemon list. And What I'm gonna set that equal to is going to be the get 30 Pokemon. And this is where the await is going to come in because I'm going to have to await for a response. And there is something going on here that this doesn't like. Boom. 
Okay. So now we see that it has the response. It's going to get away. And then what I expect this to be. So I'm going to expect Pokemon list to strict equal a list of objects. All right. So there's our function. Our function is working correctly and our test has been built out. We're mocking Axios so that we don't actually send the request. And instead, this is going to be the response that I will be receiving. So now let's go into the home page and let's create this uh, function of get 30 Pokemon. So let's go into get 30 Pokemon because that's going to be imported from the same place. Now go into the home page. And let's make some space. So let's import Axios first. And now let's say export const get 30 Pokemon. This is going to be an asynchronous function. What's the reason for our objects inside the two strict equal? That's just the structure of the data you're expecting from the Pokey API, right? Yes, that's correct. So the reasoning why the objects are inside of that list is so that I can ensure that what this function is actually returning is a list of objects. I could go further in detail and specify what's inside of those objects, but that I don't necessarily need to know that at this level. I just need to know that it returns a list of objects. Um, so now I can turn this into an async function and open it up. And then I can say let response is equal to await axios.get. Let's go back to the Pokey API, copy that, and let's paste that in there. Oof. Okay, and then let's just say that I return response. Well, I wonder what it will do. Okay, so it tells me there's a problem because it only expected an array of objects, but it received this whole thing. It, re it received an object with the data, with count, and countless other things. So now let's say that I go a little, a level deep, and now I go into data. Okay, well, it still has count, next, and previous. So which one of these am I going to return? Well, I want to return results. And now that it returns results, my test passes. <clears throat> and now if I run a use effect here, yesterday, Adam talked to us about, not Adam, I'm so sorry, Benjamin, talked to us <clears throat> about how we can't run use effects asynchronously, but we can establish a function of an asynchronous function inside of the use effect body. So let's do that. Yeah, Pokemon, this is going to be an asynchronous function. And what it's going to do is it's going to read. So maybe we go with cons Pokemon, make that equal to await, get 30 Pokemon. This function is then going to be called. And then we want to return. Okay, so it's returning Pokemon. And now let's say that I just want to console log it. So now let's say console.log. And I want to console.log get Pokemon. This is going to happen upon rendering and it's mounting. So now we have it inside of our use effect. And let's quit this. Let's run the dev server. Oh, hello. go back to the Pokey API. Okay, so we see that it didn't quite work the way we wanted it to. So we have an asynchronous function, runs Pokemon, and then we're returning something. So why isn't this working the way we want it to? Let's see. Asynchronous, await, asynchronous, await, returns the result, then return Pokemon. Da, 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 da. Hmm. 
Hmm. You're still getting the the result at the within the promise, right? In, in the console. Room? I am. Yeah. Yes. But I'm wondering why it's showing up like this instead of maybe I can do cons to my Pokemon and make that equal to get Pokemon. And instead, what I want to console log is my Pokemon. Ooh. Okay. Well, let's try this then. Is it because you're you're trying to print to the console before the promise gets resolved? If you move that console log inside the asynchronous function, would it work? Maybe, or just All appear right. differently. Well, you're you're printing you're console logging the function, which returns a promise. So you want to console log the Pokemon itself, right? That's what you're trying to get. Yeah. So then I'm gonna put it inside of a use state so that it can return the get Pokemon stuff. And then after that, I can now use a separate use effect that will track that use state to be able to console log it. Uh, on card reference, cannot access my Pokemon before initialization. So my Pokemon is here. We have cons, my Pokemon. What are you talking about? Let's see. Oh, did I not start it? Your your use state, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. And it is still not working the way I want it to work. So sending a use effect. Telling to await. It's using the get. 30 Pokemon data. Why is this not working correctly? So I set my Pokemon into something new. This is tracking my Pokemon. Hmm. I may be doing something wrong here. Let me check something real quick. Hmm. Yeah. So on on line seventeen, you're you're calling set my Pokemon, but you're passing it that function, right? Don't you want to set the Pokemon to the variable Pokemon that's coming back from line fourteen? Like, can you do the set my Pokemon inside of that async function after you get the? Oh, actually, yes, I can. Thank you so much. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, right there. Because you don't need to return it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And then get Pokemon. There you go. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Was that you, Dan? Teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. There you go. Spacing out. I apologize. Yeah, so now we created an asynchronous function where my use state gets called, and then I have this use effect that's tracking my use state so that when it changes, it can actually console log it. So here's what it looked like to start off with. There was nothing in it. Once the promise was completed and it came back, I got my 30 Pokemon. Yes, I have a tendency of reusing the same variable, variable naming complexity to make sure that they're related. So I need to stop naming things in Pokemon over and over again. But now we see that we have our 30 Pokemon coming back and everything was tested. So I know that this function itself was not the problem. If I run into any problems as far as implementing it into my home, then it's me and implementing that function into the body of my, my program. That's the problem, <laughs> not my function. And yeah. 
And that's pretty much uh, it for unit testing when it comes to um, using React with unit test. Does anyone have any questions thus far? So there will be another lesson later on where we'll go into integration tests, which integration tests are where you touch your front and back end, and you will get a lesson of end-to-end -end tests using Puppeteer scripts. And end-to-end -end tests are really interesting because what they actually do is they open up your project, click through your project, input different things into your project to be able to create different users or basically it pretends to be a human and goes through your entire um, program without you actually having to click anything. And it does it super fast so it can detect any bugs. But that will be a further on lesson that we'll do um, once we kick off the personal projects, it will be one of the optional uh, extra lessons that you guys will receive. But as of now, this is the majority of what you'll have to know about unit testing. Of course, unit testing itself is massive. So you, if you will encounter some type of case um, of, of use case that was not covered in this lesson, um, but it, it, everything is very well documented, and you can look up vtest and go down that document as much as you as much as you can to try to learn it. But up to this point, does anyone have any questions over anything that we covered today? I hope I didn't go too fast. So uh, testing where you build a second copy of your application to make sure the first version of it is working correctly. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. Um, <laughs> but here, let me try to make an example. So let's see, let's see, LS. Okay, so for example, right? Right now I have all of these things, nothing has been committed. Let's say I go and add it. So get it, add all. Okay, so now that's up in the demos and notes repo, and you guys have access to it, all right? And now my Git is tracking what's going on. Oh, we need a break. That's right. Thank you, Jose. Uh, when we come back from break, can we do a quick five-minute review of the main steps we took to get from standard application test implementation? Just an overview with them. Yeah, of course. Let's do that after the break. So currently it's 9 5, well, it's 11.15. So let's come back at 11.30 and just do a quick overview over what we did. And then I'll try to demonstrate real quick how to do merge conflicts. All right. See everyone in a couple minutes.